because I've changed my passport now. Just last week, I am really only 19 now. <laughs> Why not? I, I took them, it took the people at the passport office a little convincing. But it's on my passport that, that I, I was born in, 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 in 91. <laughs> and and uh, so there it is, see, 1991. Shit, and, that's uh, it as well, that's not. And uh, I was born in 91, so I'm 19 now. Wow. And, was uh, 19 a good year originally? Well, I just figured that Hank Cold Teddy Bear would be much more accepted if I'm 19. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I perpetuated a lot of stuff because when I was doing theater in New York, I would do little interviews like the West Side TV Times. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and do little, you know, little interviews. I think I did one for the Village Voice a long time ago about Shakespeare. And what was interesting, and I had to confess to him I'd never read Shakespeare, but who cares? And um, and so they didn't say to me, they didn't ask me the question. I'll show you the article. They never asked me the question. So they just said, well, today we're talking to Meatloaf. And they never said one time, how'd you get the name Meatloaf? Mm. And I don't remember. Mm. I worked with Raul Julia, with Mary Beth Hurt, with Tim Collins, with Seth Allen, with Ron Silver. Uh, oh, on and on and on and on. All stage actors, you know, that you would know. They were legitimate stage actors. Big stage actors. Uh, Tony Award winners, almost all of them. And they may have said behind my back, why do you think they call him Meatloaf? But nobody ever came up to me and said, so what do we call you? Yeah. What do we call you, Meat? What do we call you? The first interview I did for Bat Out of Hell, the very first one, yeah. the first question was, so how'd you get the name Meatloaf? <laughs> yeah. Who cares? In a weird way. Really? And I went, and I, and I remember my exact answer was, Dude, this is rock and roll. Why do you care? What, what difference does it make? And then I proceeded to tell him, look, I've done all this theater. Nobody asked me that. You got, and now I'm in a, in a world where, you know, there's people called the Grateful Dead. Uh, there's people called Bonzo Dog Doo Wah Diddy Band. Uh, there's, uh, you know, the Blues Magoos. There's, it's like, and you want to know where Meat Love came from? What, what kind of lame question? That's the way to start my rock and roll career. No, talk about the album, damn it. And so... Um, you must have been quite disappointed going from theatre where there was that kind of reverential respect about the art form and then suddenly it's like the, the sheer sort of like shallow depths, or not even depths, but yeah, like... Yeah, well, that's the... I come from the thing where where it's about the, the art form. It, and it doesn't, you know, it's like... Because I'm... You know, at the age of 75... At the age of 80, if I could do a film and I, I, I could make it work, I could win an Oscar. And nobody would go, they might go, at the age of 80, he gave that performance. Oh. I mean, but that's, it, it's not like a big deal. It's more like he gave that performance. If you're nine and you give a performance, you can win an Oscar. If you're 80 and they're it's, yeah, they might go on and say, oh, he's 80 years old. That's fantastic. Look, I'm still working. Yeah, no, but, but it's a different way of saying it. Uh, so I, I'm, having, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the music industry. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I was going to go on to was um, like the kind of people that are on the record. It's like a, it's like a film almost in a sense because obviously there is a very strong narrative. There's a concept to the record, but in as much that the people that are guesting on it are actors as well, or there are at least a couple on there that happen to be actor musicians. Yeah, Hugh so, Laurie and Jack Black. Did, did you find that that brought, as always in your career, that sense of theatre that you want to be a part of the process or in their performances, or was it never even crossed my mind that that's what we were doing? Okay, I, there, that that kind of thing did. And Jack Black is a friend. Yeah. We, I only. You're obviously in the Tenacious D film, weren't you? And stuff yeah, like that, so. but but I only the, the the reason Jack is on that song is because I said he'll sound amazing on this song singing with me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything to do about that's Jack's good, an that's actor. The, that's the right reason. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and Hugh Laurie, Hugh Laurie could play piano. I've got one song really that kind of has piano at the beginning. 
I said, well, if you're going to get somebody to play piano, Hugh Laurie can play. Let's get Hugh Laurie. He's right here. Hugh! <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, I mean, it was nothing more than I had done his show, and I just thought, how cool would it... Because I know he loves playing music. He has a band in Hollywood. I said, how great for both of us to have... For him to play on a record and for me to have you. And uh, Steve Vai, I, yeah. I mean, I just love Steve Vai and this record, this whole kind of record was made for Steve Vai. I mean, but you don't, you, you know, let Steve Vai do Steve Vai records, but little pieces of Steve Vai on a record is really great. Uh, Brian's been a friend for 30 years. Brian, how, Brian came on this record as he called up and said, what are you guys doing? Can I come down and visit? I'd imagine yeah. Brian May is quite like that. Actually, I've met him a few times. He's a very nice guy. He's yeah, just, he's, he's great. He help. just wanted to know. No, he wasn't even coming to play. He just wanted to see what we were doing, listen, and and hang out. And it was me that brought up the thing. You want to play? Mm. Oh, I can't. <laughs> and Rob goes, well, I have the, uh, I have the uh, Brian May signature guitar here. It's just like yours. You do? <laughs> and I also have an amp. And Brian goes... Yeah, but my amp is... And he goes, oh, I know what you did to your amp. We did the same thing to that one once he starts playing. Eventually, he, he, I went out there said, how you doing? He goes, me, me fingers can't move. I'm, I'm sort of like sounding like a, a Ringo, but that's okay. Uh, I was doing more Ringo. He's than, on that? <laughs> no, no. And, and, but he really couldn't move his fingers. Yeah, yeah. His fingers were like almost frozen. So I said, maybe you got a good part. <laughs> after all this period of time, after all the records you made, after all the bats, all of those things, all the people you collaborated with, all the appearances from Fight Club to, you know, to Rocky Horror, all those things, what's attracted you continually all the way through your life to the theatre and to music? Well, because, what you because, because if, you're in, if, you're, if you're in this business, it's, you're riding the merry-go-round. These all had the, the uh, vision of the riding the merry-go-round going for the brass ring. Everybody's heard it. Yeah. They actually used to have those where you'd ride around trying to reach out and get a brass ring. And I'm on, I'm on that, 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 that artistic merry-go-round trying to grab that brass ring. Hmm. And as long as I can't grab it, I keep going because... The whole object is to move forward. I know in a merry-go-round, this is a stupid analogy now. <laughs> How dumb of an analogy. If I'm trying to move forward and I'm just going around in circles. I hate that analogy now. I'll never use that analogy again. I know, I got to go. But we're, the object is to move forward. Mm. The object is to really just keep moving forward to try to get better. And the minute you're satisfied or the minute, then it's time to go fishing. Mm, absolutely. Well, let's hope that day doesn't come. No um, more merry-go-round. That's a stupid analogy. Who would have thought of that analogy? 